What's going on guys? Welcome back to this video. Today we're going to revisit OSINT. Let's first redefine OSINT. So OSINT stands for, so the O it is for open, S it is for source, open source, and then you have the INT stands for intelligence. So open source intelligence. So what is open source intelligence? We have talked about this many times. Uh, but open source intelligence, it's the gathering and collection of information from public sources. So the first thing uh, is that OSINT uses public sources to gather information. Some sources call OSINT or they name it as passive information gathering or passive recon because you don't interact or engage the target while gathering information it's the opposite of active recon in active recon you interact with the target to gather the information examples of active recon is using nmap right another example is Use, using popular tools to gather information such as SNMB enumeration another tool to gather information while interacting with the target real time is Enium Linux so these are tools that can be used to gather information but in an active manner in an active fashion passive reconnaissance we don't interact with the target. So one of the ways to perform passive reconnaissance is to use OSINT or to use public sources. What are examples of public sources? Social media, such as Reddit, uh, Facebook, you name it. These are called social media and it is considered one of the most important sources to gather information about a target so say we're given a name here so what we're going to do we're going to input this name in various social media sites to gather as much information as possible so social media includes these platforms and inside the platforms there are specific targets that you would look into for example you would look in the posts you would look in the comments section right the profiles the photos the media okay so this is for this is one example of social media one example of public sources another example is search engine or search engines okay now sometimes we need an automated method to gather information that's why we use automated tools to perform uh, open source intelligence so one of the automated tools so if we go here to to the notes and we um, navigate to let's see here where is uh, to our team information gathering and here we search for OSINT okay so information gathering frameworks recon ng it's one of the tools that we can install on kali to perform information gathering in a passive fashion so it's, it can be considered as an OSINT tool so instead of going uh, your way the manual method going through social media and search engines you just have to <coughs> install recon ng and work with it Also, these are DNS enumeration tools we can use to dig DNS information about a target without interacting with the target. Okay, the rest are not considered as OSINT. So, IP information, URL scan. These are common tools we can use to perform OSINT. Here we have, I have this playlist, OSINT training, where you can find the walkthroughs of multiple challenges and case studies about OSINT. 
and I'm going to put the link of this playlist in the video description. Okay, and here we use nc ns lookup. Okay, dash type. I'm going to probe text record. Text records of the secure startup.com. Okay, so we have one non authoritative answer. Okay, but we don't have any information about whether there is an SPF record or not. Okay, let's try to do this. So here, let's bro for the DMARC record. Usually DMARC records start with underscore DMARC. And again here, we don't have an answer. Or we don't have, it looks like there is no DMARC record. So no DMARC record, no SPF record, means attackers will be able to create spoofing, create spoofed emails. Let's go here and see if there is anything more we can do. So let's use any here. If we use any, we're gonna extract all the DNS records. Oh, this is dig. Okay, sorry for that. We're gonna have to stick with NS lookup. We can use dig, by the way. So dig secure startup. Okay, take a look at this. So here we got more information. As you can see, we have one text record where it looks like it's an SPF record. We have to extract the DNS information of this domain name looks like the SPF record is messed up and there is no DMARC, no DKIM records. That would explain why attackers are able to send convincing phishing emails. Convincing, convincing phishing emails are emails that come pretending to be from an authoritative sender, such as this domain name. So I have a LinkedIn profile and we have an Instagram profile and we have a Twitter profile. Let's take a look first at this. So, as you can see, there is a flag here, but it looks like it is base 64 or encoded in somehow. So we're gonna have to copy this, go back here, echo, I'm gonna assume it is base 64 and try to decode it. You can do this, keep going. Okay. All right. eCorp is the leading global provider of corporate strategy. There is not there is nothing else to find here. Let's take a look at the Instagram account. And this is an Instagram account of someone. Let's take a look at the LinkedIn profile. It doesn't exist. Probably because the challenge is retired. Oh, let's take a look at this. So in this post here, one of the, as you can see guys, one of the ways to perform OSINT over social media is to take a look at the posts and decode the comments. The, we're gonna search, we're gonna input the name, uh, sorry, the email address of the person. And here we have it in search, click on this. And here we have the option to start the chat, but to find the location, you don't need to you don't need to start a chat all you have to do is to right click and click on inspect all right so what we're we gonna do here what is the thing we're gonna find in this haystack so we're gonna use the search okay the old method is to type oid equal number or zero or without putting any number just put an equal sign and one double coat. As you can see, we have zero matches. Now that was the old method of finding the location using an email, using the, or starting from an email address. Recently, what you have to do, you have to replace OID with GS data. 
And then what we have to do, we have to find a pattern of numbers um, that we can use in the Google locations. So usually Google has a lot of services. Among them is Google Hangouts, Google Maps, whatsoever. So the OID here, or the ID we're looking after, <coughs> represents an ID of a person on Google Maps. Okay, Usually they can be someone who um, post reviews on Google. So if you go to Google Maps here, google.com slash maps slash contributions. Okay, so maps. And now this will open uh, Google Maps. So basically here, we go to contributions and we can see the contributions I have, okay. So take a look at the URL. So this is the URL, as you can see, maps, contributions, and this is the ID. That's what we're looking for here to find. We're looking to find the ID that's used uh, to, to, in Google Maps. So basically we can find the ID here using GS data. So let's see here, we have 53 matches. We're gonna have to sift through all of these matches to find the, the pattern. So the first one here, it's not the thing we're looking after. So let's skip to the second match, not applicable. Okay, skip. Oh, we have this one. Let's take a look at this. So this line here, GS data equal ZOI81 user, and we have a pattern, 11739. If we take a look at this number, we take it and we try to hit Google Maps with this number. So instead of the ID here of mine, we're going to remove this and paste this ID. This will take me to the profile page of the user flag watcher. When we click on reviews, we can see the reviews they have posted uh, to other maps or on other maps. And we can see it, he's working at Ego Egotistical Bank. Let's take a look at other results. So this is a walkthrough for the challenge. This is a Twitter account. You can copy the link and take a look at the Twitter account. So if you go through the tweets, you might find some hint in other scenarios. Because usually people uh, use Twitter to, you know, send real-time updates about what they're doing or what they have done or where they are. So you can see here there is a location in Mexico. Now, the regular course of action is to download the image and see if there is exceed data. But the challenge is not classified or categorized as steganography. So we're going to skip this uh, probability here. We don't have other useful hits, so we're gonna now search for the name or the location of where he works. So he works at Ego Distical Bank. Let's take a look at this. And we have one X account. We like money, your money. So it's very clear that this is the account we need to investigate. Going through the tweets, you can see here that wishing all of the customers are safe. Hello world, it's not good news. So there was this tweet. Yeah, this one. Once this pandemic is over, we will be planning or will be opening our new branches in earnest. Be sure to check Foursquare Guide for our locations. Now remember that Foursquare is a website that stores locations of companies and firms. So if we look in this website, we might stumble upon the location that we are looking for. So if we go now to Conduct a Google search and type for square Roland Sanchez. This will 
give you this result. Tamper at stellar wheels.